They just really like rain. Like actually being outside when it's raining. Even when it's not summer? Me and mom would like to sit outside under the awning to listen to the rain on it and watch the lightning. I enjoy it also but not to work in. I used to sit on my balcony and have dinner while it drizzled. Eat and take pictures. It was quite peaceful. I used to like it. But then I moved to the PNW and I feel like I never see the sun. Yeah, I love the rain so much. People think I'm weird. Edit, this one time I had to explain myself why I was chilling in the rain. It was pretty funny. Can companies legally make their employees stay a few minutes over time? You maybe need to have a chat with your supervisor and say you don't mind staying over on the odd shift but it's turning into a regular thing and you really need to able to leave on time? 5 to 10 minutes before your scheduled end of shift ask them do you need me to do anything else before I clock out question mark and quad. Lamau no you can technically walk out. Just consider that they might fire you for not fitting workplace culture and quad. Why not just not plan getting off work at 4.20 then you won't be late. If you started the job at say 3.58, you were still on clock. Most places like you to finish a job that you already started. If they are making you stay for no reason then I would ask why you have to stay that late. The only time a company can make you work is if you sign a contract. And even then it's generally not that hard to get out of. However, that goes both ways. And an employer in the US can fire you because he doesn't like your shoes. Never mind refusing to stay a bit over time. If they pay you. There isn't much you can do besides complain or quit. Mandatory overtime is rarely something that is in the company book. Hiring contract. Or anything like that. Even if you manage to do something they could just say they asked you and you state of your own will. Just suck it up and plan for your day to be longer. Or find another job. Now if only you are being asked to stay. Another story. Customer service people. What has been told to you that almost made you break character? I worked at a cable company during the height of the Panini. This man called and asked if he could pay to start his cable and broadband again. I said yeah sure. You have to call our collection agency for that because you are three months behind on all of them. This man went into a long rant about how he had been locked in his apartment by a politician and that he was the only one in his city that had been locked in because this was a local politician who wanted to get into our government and that he couldn't pay because of this reason and that he only had his guitar with him. I always laugh when I think of this story because of weird of was and I was so close to just burst out laughing while talking to him. A woman came to me and said that we had mislabeled a breakfast sandwich two days in a row and made her sick. She claimed that she was allergic to bell peppers and kept getting the bell pepper omelet sandwich instead of sausage egg and cheese. Then she said she still ate the sandwich and threw up in her car. Both days in a row, she didn't know how to read the signs for each properly, the one she wanted was the shelf above, and then she didn't read the wrapper. I honestly just explained how the labels worked and gave her a free sandwich. Life is hard. But it's harder when you're stupid. Used to work at a call center for a charity. People would text to donate PS5 and then I'd call them and ask if they would want to make it a monthly donation. Always got abused by, what sounded like, middle class white businessmen. Had a few calls with what sounded like old. Working class people who would want to donate money. Had more than one tell me they were in hospital and weren't sure if they'd make it but wanted to give something. They sounded like they were on death's door as well so I believed them. I do badly wanted to end the call and tell them to leave it but we were recorded so I had to try my best to stay on script. Horrible job I would not recommend it. What kids show was so good when you were little that you could watch every episode again as an adult. Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, but. It's not a kid's show. Just as applicable to adulthood and created by Fred Rogers to help families communicate better and for viewers to learn to work through common issues and learn to respect themselves. All the Roadrunner Coyote tunes. The Rube Goldberg inventions the Coyote come up with still make me laugh. They had to be half drunk when they came up with those. Dragon Ball Z. Pretty much every anime we watch as kids even if we shouldn't. To see adult to understand the jokes we couldn't get at the time and how messed up it was for us to see it at our age. Arthur. When I had my daughter I rewatched every episode and it made me feel giddy lol. The second I hear every day when you're walking down the street I smile. Batman Beyond. It was very much ahead of its time. It was dark. The action scenes were good and it was entertaining to watch as a kid. Also the fact that I got to see Bruce Wayne age and Terry picking up the mantle was crazy. Sad that they never finished the series however. L. Spider-Man. Sman. Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles. Bucky O'Hare. Thundercats. Street Sharks. Dungeons and Dragons. Biker Mice from Mars. Batman the Animated Series, Captain Planet, Wacky Races, Tom and Jerry, The Flintstones, I can't think of any more off the top of my head. But I watch all of these shows when I get high. I love M. Probably showing my age here but there was a show in the UK back in the early 90s called Count Ducula. As a kid it was enjoyable but some of the jokes went over my head. Your cousin lives in Spain my lord. He's sure to give us a warm welcome and quat. Oh he's a friendly kind of guy question mark and quat. No my lord. He's a pyromaniac and quat. What are the harsh truths a woman should know about relationships? If you want them to earn the money you desire to fit your lifestyle, holidays, restaurants etc. That will entail him sacrificing time, even time with you, in order to earn it. It is a trade-off he's typically making for your sake. And you resenting him for spending less time with you to do it is spitting in the face of that sacrifice. 
a lot of men could quite happily live with a bare minimum in life and be content. They work harder to earn more for the sake of their loved ones. So if it comes down to a choice, you need to decide what you're comfortable with, more money, or more time. Very few fortunate people have both. Generally speaking you, women, will never suck or fuck us enough lol. We can in fact turn our brains off temporarily. If you ask us our plans for the weekend or evening and we say nothing, we mean our plan is to do nothing. Don't ask questions you don't actually want the answer to. AKA do I look fat in this? Unless you are ready to hear something you might not like without being pissy about it don't ask. Y'all ladies suck at telling stories and it's a giant pain in the ass to listen to them. You're probably not his ideal body type. I've never even been with my ideal body type in a woman. It's such a high standard and somewhat rare. On the other hand, it's actually not that important in the scheme of things. I like the female body. So even average is attractive to me. It sucks that men are under such pressure to make women feel like they are as ideal, aesthetically. Where I as a man just accept that she's not with me because I'm the hottest guy she's ever seen. I'm okay with that. I think I prefer that. 